Hi, my name is Hilary Stupa, and I am a developer with Qdabra Software. And I just wanted to walk through with you quickly how to get all the emails for members of a SharePoint group. I know sometimes moving from other workflow tools to uh, Microsoft Flow, that's something that can be a little challenging. So for this flow, since it's just a simple demo, I'm going to call this Get Group Emails and we are going to manually trigger this flow. You'll use other steps in your flow prior to this one probably, um, but again, just an easy demo. So we're going to use the REST API for this, the SharePoint REST API. So we're just going to look in, uh, let's do HTTP request for our action. And this uh, is not a premium connector. This is just the regular send an HTTP request to SharePoint. We're using the get method, so we won't need any uh, headers or anything. And I'm just going to select my my demos site here. And you know what? I want this up in another tab. So let's do that. While that's loading, we'll go finish this. So uh, the method we're going to use here is get, as I mentioned. And then for the URI, we need to go figure out what's the right URI to get back group members. Um, and in this case, SharePoint Stack Exchange had a great post on it. Um, you can find this other places as well. It's just a matter of looking for uh, SharePoint, REST, API, uh, get group members. If you if you do a Google search on something like that, you will get back these types of results. So in this case, this answer has pretty much exactly what I need. I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it over here. However, what I need to replace here, you can see this is the get by name method, and I have to put in the name of one of my groups from my site. So let's go find the name of a group here, and that's going to be under my site settings. So we'll do this, site settings, and we're going to look at people and groups. And here is the group I'm going to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to Oops, one more letter there, copy this, and I'm going to paste that over here in my flow. Um, now, you can test these, these URL calls, uh, these API calls in your web browser. So let's do that real quick and see if we can see what kind of data we're getting back. And let's do that. And let's hit enter. Now I've got a select clause on here because all I want is email. If I took that off, I would get all of the user's information. So you can always take a look at that XML in a, in a text editor or something. And, and uh, you can see just the email is there. If I wanted back all the properties, I would get rid of my select clause. Backspace and enter. And then I'm going to do that same process again. I'm just using Notepad++ Notepad++ plus plus, uh, with the XML tools installed. As a <laughs> as someone who's done a lot of InfoPath development, I just like XML tools installed. But here you can see all of the different uh, properties that are returned with that call. However, we're just sending an email today, so we just need that piece with the select. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to um, need to figure out how we get this how we get this data back right how do we get this you know uh, data returns to us for use in our flow like when we go and look at our dynamic contents or something like that and if we don't if we don't parse the JSON we're just going to have back the body object which is fine you can get data from that but it's a lot easier to deal with if we use a parse JSON step and so what we're going to do is we're going to test our flow um, to take a look at what's returned from our call here because the parse JSON action has this handy feature where it will generate the schema from your data and we want to take advantage of that. So what I generally do is I just run uh, a test of my flow and then I can copy out this body right here and let's see, let's get back into editing. And now I can do a new step, and that is parse JSON. There it is. Okay, my content here is my body and my schema. Hmm, you know, like I said, I could go find that, I could go develop that myself, or I can use a sample payload that I just put on my clipboard and say done. And this action will parse the JSON for me, and, and I don't have to worry about what the schema looks like. 
Next, I'm going to initialize a variable that I can append these email addresses to um, because we're going to loop through all of these email addresses and we need to create a longer string that includes all of them. I'm going to name it emails. By the way, a word about naming these actions. You would probably want to rename these and not use the generic names. Uh, since I'm just demonstrating here and I'm not going to be keeping this flow, I don't plan on going to a lot of trouble. We need to loop through everything that was returned from our parse JSON. So we're going to go ahead and do an apply to each. Oh, come on, search. There we go. My apply to each control. And what's my output? It is my results from my parse JSON. Otherwise, I'd be dealing with the body, and I don't want to have to do that. So now we add an action. And the next thing we're going to do here in our apply to each is we're going to append each email to our email string. So let us see append to array. Nope, append to string. That's what I want. Name of my variable is emails. The value I'm going to append is the email from my parse JSON. So here's parse JSON. Here's my email, easy for me to pick, and a semicolon, right? And now finally, you would have a step here to send an email. Because I'm not going to bother my colleagues this fine morning, I am going to use a compose step to show you the results. And so we will add a compose step. There is one. And here is my variable. You know, notice how we've got these little groupings that show us the, the action that provided these values for the dynamic content. We also have a nice search feature here, you know, so you can use search when things get a little bigger. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just hit this guy, which is my variable. I'm going to save. We are going to run another test, and you will see how we now have a nice string with all of the email addresses of everybody in our group. Let me just hit run flow here and done Ola. Okay, and what have we got here? Here are our inputs. This is coming from our variable here and our outputs. Here's my list of semicolon delimited users from the group that I requested the data from. Uh, nicely arrayed for me to put into the to line of an email. So I hope this is helpful to you and I hope you have a fantastic day.